Hello friends. In this video, we will analyze how to set up a desktop session in Lincoln Sphere. We will analyze all the steps in detail so that you can easily and quickly create flexible sessions for work. Let's go. Let's start by creating a session. To do this, click the New Session button or use the Ctrl plus N hack on Windows or CMD plus N on Mac OS. Click and wait for the Settings window to open. The session creation interface appears in front of us. In the top line set the name, let it be for example Test Session. Next, select a color or icon so that the session becomes easily recognizable. If it is associated with a specific service, for example Amazon, select the appropriate icon. Just below, we see a block for adding tags. This is useful if you have a lot of sessions, 100, 200, or even 300. Let's add tag 1 and tag 2 to make it easier to find the one you need later. Below is a field for description. Here you can write important notes, account data, or other information. For example, let's add the text description. Please note that the description supports markdown formatting. Highlight the text in bold, make italics, highlight headings, and so on. Now we have configured the session design, and let's go down below. In the period to configure the connection, we immediately see the button to open the proxy manager. You can immediately connect them from it. But we discuss this topic in detail in another video, so we close it and return back. Below is a list for selecting the main protocols as well as free proxy which is provided by the Sphere for users from the light tariff. For example, select SOX5, specify the IP, port, login, and password. If the proxy is dynamic, you can additionally enter a link to change the IP. For example, let's stop at free proxy. The next step is to select a country, say France, and click check proxy and geo. After completion, the IP address, country, languages, and the session and time zone will appear below. These parameters can be edited manually by turning on the switch. For example, change the time zone. For convenience, we will return the settings to automatic. Let's continue. At the bottom of the window, there are WebRTC and DNS settings. In WebRTC, you can select Direct. The direct value from the device is used. Fake fakes the value or NA. Empty value. Let's select Fake. For DNS, you can switch from automatic to manual mode and set your own address, for example, Google. However, we will leave it on automatic so that the system automatically adjusts to the selected proxy. We have finished setting up the session connection with you. Let's now proceed to setting up the session data. Go down below and see the block with data settings. Here, first of all, we select how the data will be saved locally on the device or via cloud synchronization. If you switch to local saving, all parameters such as cookies, history, passwords, etc. will remain only on the current device. This means that when you log into your account from another device, this data will not be loaded since it is tied exclusively to the device where you worked. If you activate cloud synchronization, all the parameters checked will be saved on the Sphere servers. Thanks to this, the data is automatically synchronized between all your devices, providing unified access wherever you work. Now let's save. In the block itself, first we have a button to clear save data, and to the right we see a window for inserting cookies manually, via Ctrl V on Windows and Command V on Mac OS. If your cookies are with a file, you can insert them by clicking on the Choose File button and then selecting it on your device. Below are four categories for managing start pages, bookmarks, extensions, and passwords. Let's look at each of them. Let's start with passwords. Here you can add the website address, specify the login and password. In the future when you visit this site, Lincoln Sphere will offer to automatically log into your account, as Chrome does with saved data. You can also import passwords from a text file. If you have multiple accounts for different sites, just add more lines. After saving, a number will appear in the menu showing how much data has been saved. Let's move on to extensions. After the window loads, you can immediately install any custom extension. For example, if it is not hosted in the Chrome Store or is developed manually, built-in search in the Chrome Store is also available. Let's find MetaMask as an example.
Click the install button and this extension will be automatically added to your session. Save the changes and see the number that appears indicating the number of installed extensions. Now bookmarks. Here you can create one or more folders to organize links and simplify further work. This will help you quickly navigate a large number of saved pages. Here you can add bookmarks, assign them names and specify website addresses. If you have a lot of bookmarks, it is easy to add or delete lines. As in the previous sections, you can import bookmarks from a file or list. Choose what is more convenient. Click save and see the number one that appears which shows the number of added bookmarks. Now let's move on to the start pages. Here you can set up sites that will open automatically when you start a session. This is especially convenient if you want to immediately load for example checkers for checking the IP address or other session parameters. Let's add one of the popular checkers, Fake Vision. Add the name of the start page and its address. As in the case of bookmarks, here you can also import data as a list or add a new line. Save the changes and see that a number has also appeared next to the item, reflecting the number of start pages. Congratulations! Now we have set up the design, connection and data. Let's move on to something equally important. Scroll down to set up a fingerprint that will be visible to the site when visiting it through Lincoln Sphere. Let's look at the available methods for replacing fingerprints. The first mode is Hybrid 2.0. When you select it, you will immediately notice that the status bar of the replacement quality shows the value almost real. This is explained by how the hybrid generates data that is as close to real as possible. On the screen, you will now see a detailed description of the logic of the mode. Let's move on to the second option, Normal Mode. Here you completely control the settings manually. When setting up, the system shows how realistic the configuration looks via the status bar. For example, if you are running Windows 11 but select MacOS, say version 14, the status bar will indicate a discrepancy. This is due to the difference in the architecture of the systems. Anti-fraud can easily recognize that it is not a real Mac OS. Therefore, for Windows users we recommend choosing the appropriate versions of Windows, and for Mac owners select a system for M processors or Intel, depending on your device. Let's go back to Windows 11. Here you can specify not only the operating system, but also configure the video card parameters, screen resolution, fonts used, as well as the number of processor cores and the amount of RAM. And thanks to the button on the left, you can select random values if you just need a replacement without specific parameters. Now let's move on to the third and final mode, Configuration Pool. This is an innovation in the second version of the Sphere, which brings back the functionality available in earlier versions of the browser. The Configuration Pool mode provides ready-made configurations that you can select and apply to your session. The list of configurations displays brands, device models, operating systems, and so on. For example, select a Dell device, check it, and click Install. All data is automatically loaded and the status bar shows that the fingerprint is as close to real as possible. At the bottom of the window, there is a setting for noise, canvas, WebGL, client rects, audio, WebGPU, and media device. Here you can enable or disable the substitution of each of them. Let's say we enable the canvas substitution. The slider changes its position from almost real to balanced, which indicates increasing uniqueness. If you add WebGL, the fingerprint uniqueness increases a little more, which is not. Desirable, since the goal is to blend in with the crowd, not stand out. If you activate a few more substitutions, such as client rects and audio, the slider turns red indicating that the fingerprint has become too unique. However, an innovative substitution is now available for client rects, which undergoes checks. Previously, its use was not recommended, but with this update, it became possible to use it safely. It is better to activate the web GPU substitution if the installed card is not native. Media devices, on the contrary, have virtually no effect on the overall uniqueness parameter so they can be enabled if necessary without the risk of deteriorating the configuration. Now let's quickly return to font substitution. To do this, let's return to the normal substitution mode and open the font window. 
Unlike most anti-detections, which only transmit headers about the presence of fonts, the Sphere provides a full-fledged substitution. Fonts are actually installed at the system level. This allows you to create the most realistic fingerprint. In normal mode, you can also configure fingerprints not only for the desktop, but also for mobile or tablet devices. This allows you to emulate visiting a site from different platforms. We will analyze a detailed guide to setting up mobile and tablet configurations in a separate video. A hint will appear on the screen. Now we return to the configuration pool. We see that the previously selected config has been saved, and all settings remain in effect. At the very bottom of the interface, there is a block miscellaneous, where you can enable or disable additional parameters for ease of use. For example, one of these parameters in Donut Track is a standard setting that is available in most browsers based on Chromium or Firefox. When activated, it sends a request to the site with a flag indicating that you do not want to be tracked or shown personalized advertising. Next, we see functions such as Restore History Saving Tabs, Save Passwords, and others. These parameters can also be enabled or disabled. For example, if you disable saving history, the session will not record the search history. This is useful when you work in a team and you need to speed up the launch of the session. There are also additional options, disable image loading or block pop-up windows, that will help optimize the work in the session. After you have configured all the parameters, I recommend checking the correctness of all the data again. Are you sure? Then click Create. After creating a session, it will appear on your desktop. Quick changes are available here. For example, you can change the name of the session. For example, let's add one to the name, or the connection type. Let's say we switch from Free Proxy to SOX 5 or other options. If you use Free Proxy, you can change the geolocation, recheck the connection, or save the current proxy. There are three main buttons nearby, checking the proxy to check the functionality. Installing a proxy from the manager will open a window for setting up via the built-in proxy manager, changing IP. If you work with dynamic proxies, you will be automatically redirected to the link to change the address. For example, when using free proxy, the IP address will simply be updated to a new one from the general pool. Check again. We see that everything is fine. The IP has successfully changed and the system has sent notifications. Finally, for convenience, you can set the status of your session. For example, Amazon New. Give it a name and click Save. Now we have this status displayed in the general list of sessions. Congratulations! We have learned how to customize the design, connection, data, and fingerprint in desktop sessions. The next step will be to look at the detailed configuration of Android fingerprints and create a preset. Good luck, colleagues. <laughs>